Today I'm going to have a project on the financial crisis and the Japan bubble and I want you to have a comparison on the causes and consequences of the Japan and US financial crisis within an hour and I will come back to see your presentation after one hour, okay? to the causes of the Japan bubble, we want to start from the uh, formation of the real asset bubble first. So uh, in, in the credit crisis happening in the US, the asset prices has increased uh, steadily since 1975 to, 90, to 2008 and especially accelerated in 1996. An even an appreciation rate around 12% per annum is shown. And for Japan, the asset bubble, uh, asset price has increased uh, steadily since 1983, especially accelerated in 1986, and even recorded an, the urban land price index is reached the peak in 1990, which is four times the one in 1985. And in the graph here, it's shown the commercial land price and the residential land price here, which uh, it has shown that it reached the peak in 1987, and also the the uh, nationwide increase in land price, which shown the Tokyo increase the most in this case, and also for um, for for the graph showing the change in land price in U.S. here, uh, you can see like the housing price in U.S. has increased steadily for at least thirty years, and it actually uh, increased far more than the inflation rate. Okay, here are the reasons of the formation of asset bubble in Japan. Um, first of all, it was about the aggressive behavior of banking sector. Um, to yield for more profit, banks lend to small firms backed by property or property-related lo loans. And also, um, it was about the matter of capital equity requirements. It was more difficult to assess the re business risks due to the increasing capital base as a method to against risks. And secondly, um, Japanese were overconfident in their economy. Europea was present in 80s Japan. In the 80s, um, Japan had good performance in overseas market and excellent management and manufacturing techniques. As Japan performed um, well before the birth of um, asset bubble, people strongly believed that Japan would keep the good performance in the future. And thirdly, it was about the protracted monetary policy. The policy was used to stimulate the economic growth by reducing interest rate and boosting money supply. The Bank of Japan um, lowered the discount rate from 5% to 2.5% and asset price um, surged rapidly. The Bank of Japan realized the problem of high asset price and tend to turn monetary easing into monetary tightening. However, the monetary tightening started in May 1989. It was late as the effects of tightening would not show immediately. So double digit growth of supply was still record in the late 1989. Fourthly, the taxations and regulations in Japan helped to reduce land supply and also boost land prices. Also, there are some similarities between Japan in 1989 and the United States in 2008. In the United States, securitization and supply lending were conducted as the aggressive behavior of the banking sector. Banks at that time packed loans into mortgage-backed securities and sold it to the investors. As people believed that the housing market would not fail, MBS were popular among investors. Also with the subprime lending, many, house many home buyers with poor credit were also able to obtain loans, but eventually they failed to settle the loans, which contributed to the formation of the housing bubble. Overconfidence also existed in the pre-crisis US. As mentioned in the previous slide, US land prices have increased at least 30 years, 
And people did not believe that their property, their property markets will, will collapse one day. At the same time, the well-performed stock markets in Japan and US gave optimistic expectation to investors. And here are some statistics about total debt relative to GDP ratio. As we can see from the graph, uh, at, at the time of outbreak of the Japan asset bubble that is at late 1898, the total, the total debt relative to GDP was about 270%. For US, the ratio was extremely high either. That is of 381% in 2008. For such a high debt ratio, it's for sure that the economy is not healthy at that time. Other than high debt to GDP ratio, the sector of private debt existed. The actual debt number tripled within 10 years' time. While in US, the data was not handsome either. Household debt rose to 100% of GDP, which accounted for 14.5 trillion US dollars just before the credit crisis burst. Okay, after talking about the causal similarities of Japan's bubble and US credit crisis, let's sort of focus on the differences. The first one is about banking system. In terms of banking system, the significant difference between US and Japan was the household saving kept in banks. A high proportion was strong in Japan. So, when the bank system collapsed, the one relied most on the banking saving would suffer the most. Second, banks in Japan several decades before enjoyed market dominance. Only 21 large banks were in Japan at around 1980s, while more than 3,000 associations uh, was in US. Next, let's investigate what the government or financial organization would do to help the failed uh, institution at the time. In Japan, DIC has never been used to help depositors of a collapsed institution. In contrast, FDIC in the US addresses failures through uh, purchase and assumption transactions. Lastly, for equity securities, Japan banks could do their own equity securities so they can uh, so they can regulate their own performance. However, this could not happen in the uh, US because of the separate accounts of primary balance sheet. So now we're going to focus on the consequences parts of the crisis. So we want to divide it into the impacts on macroeconomy and also impacts on corporations. So um, uh, before we talk too deep into the comparison, we are going to introduce you the basic concept of what happened after the Japan asset bubble burst. So in terms of the real GDP growth rate, it has shown that Japan real uh, GDP growth rate has suffered and also shown by a sharp decline trend and also recorded a negative real GDP growth rate in 1998. And also in terms of the unemployment rate, it has shown that it was consistently at 2% and also recorded a surge in unemployment from 1992 onwards and it is because the monetary uh, tightening uh, effect sets in after only 1992. As you can see, the real estate markets also worsened during the period. There is a plummet in the average residential property index from 1990 onwards. At the same time, the stock index, Nikkei, 225 also didn't perform well with a drastic decrease in index in 1989 and stayed around 20,000 indexes after the bubble burst. And actually, the Japan economy is also suffering from yet another problem, the liquidity trap. Here you can see the graph that shows the nominal interest rate of Japan during the period. There is a significant drop in the nominal interest rate in 1990 and they around 0% to 1% from 1995 onwards. This means that any expansion of monetary policy executed by the Japan government to stimulate the economy will fail to do so. It will always be ineffective with the existence of the liquidity trap. That's why Japan also suffered from the liquidity trap. So for the, um, uh, for the graph here, it shows a sharp decrease of private sector loans uh, being issued starting from 1992 and it has suggested that the economy is, was in recession and has only little investment made into the market which is uh, a kind of impact to the corporations and also there's shown an increasing national government that recorded here um, which means there are an existence of zombie companies which they are continu continuously supported by the government and they are actually not able to attract any investment to cover their debts. Despite the certain differences of the prices, they both share similarities and mainly two types, which are the impacts on microeconomy and the responding policy. 
Um, as we can see from the graph, there is a punch in the, uh, in the price of real estate markets and stock markets in both Japan and US. Other than that, the total debt in Japan is similar to that in US. The total debt eight years later was 385% for Japan, which is near 375% for the US. After the burst of the bubble in US and Japan, both of the countries are in economic downturn. The US unemployment rate rose from about 4% to 2000 to, to, to in 2000 to 9.6%. Japan seems to have experienced the same problem since the unemployment rate rose from a little over 2% in 1989 to 5%. In addition, companies in US and Japan tend to hire part-time workers in order to cut the, uh, cut the benefits to the worker and to boost the profits. Hence, there is an increase in part-time unemployment in both countries. And uh, both countries are actually caught in a liquidity trap, which is previously mentioned. They took unconventional monetary policies like quantity easing, and both of the policies are actually have little in effect and it caused a lack of confidence in the weak house is because a lack of confidence in the weak uh, housing market and also leads to a lack of demand and also producing a price declines and also deflationary expect expectation that permits um, many other people from thinking that and also it can no longer lower interest rates and so on. Okay, although there are impacts brought on by um, these crises, um, there are actually great differences in terms of how the prices affect future economic developments. As uh, now we will analyze the consequences at different levels and from various stakeholders' perspectives. Comparing these two crises, we noticed that the scale of the consequences were vastly different. The consequences of the Japan crisis mainly lie with their own domestic banking system, whereas the consequences of the credit crisis uh, was spread across the globe due to the originating distributed nature of the MBSs, meaning that these property loans were intended to be purchased by different investors. Thus, the collapse of the housing bubbles in the US also led to the balance sheet problems of other governments of the world. In comparison, the Japan crisis mainly involved the overexpansion of domestic investment projects, confining the scope of the affected areas to the Japan economy. Um, considering the immediately, immediate response of the banking system, Japan suffered from non-performing bank loans and led to the emergence of zombie banks. In contrast, the U.S. has learned from the Japanese government mistake and provide rapid liquidity at the peak of the crisis for recapitalization and to offset the mortgage. This effectively protect the U.S. banking system from falling into a strengthened economy. The last timely response of the Japan government essentially results in more severe impacts on the financial market. We noticed the downturn of the Japanese equity and property prices was much more persistent, with drop the economy in a decade-long stagnation. In contrast, the equity prices rebounded in the U.S. within one and a half year after the crisis with the support of federal government injection of the liquidity in the market. This difference of the financial market responses also leads to the different severity of the debt problems faced by the two governments. Japan suffered from a problem of high debt to GDP ratio, which has persisted and worsened over the years, with an increasing trend of the ratio. In comparison, the US rate of increase is predicted to be much more subtle than in Japan, as demonstrated by the much uh, less steep uh, slope of the red curve, which represents the United States. In terms of the impact on the consumer level, due to the difference in the causes of the crisis, the US economy suffered from a significant more severe problem of household debts than the Japanese. As a percentage of household income, an average, on average an American household bears 15% more debts than a Japanese family. Yeah. Good. So now I see that both crises have similar causes and I think there are still differences between two consequences of the financial crisis but I think the both crises still have a lot of significant causes to the economy and there is a period of time will have a significant effect of this crisis. Um, thank you for everyone's effort and we will now move on to the 